Good afternoon. Uh, we're about to start a um, Wednesday lunchtime reflection. Um, if you are visiting the church, feel free to continue to wander around and have a look at our beautiful building. Uh, but in a moment, I will be sharing some thoughts on uh, the boy, the mole, the fox and the horse. Good afternoon. I can hear the bells on City Hall ringing that it's one o'clock, so I will start my reflection. It's uh, lovely to see those of you in the building and those of you online. I wanted to speak today about a popular book and film that has um, become very popular over the last uh, couple of years. It's called The Boy, the Mole, the Horse and the Fox. And if you haven't come across this book, I do encourage you to seek it out. It was made into an animated film and shown on BBC One on Christmas Day. I would say this is in the tradition of Winnie the Pooh or Wind in the Willows. It looks like a children's book, but actually the content is simple, beautiful and full of wisdom. The animated film is a little bit like The Snowman in that it's a wonderfully hand-drawn animation with a delightful soundtrack and a gentle but profound story. The characters featured in the book started life as Facebook posts. The artist Charlie McKaysey started posting his drawings on Instagram as an invitation to develop a conversation around mental health and vulnerability. One of these images of the boy and the horse has a caption, what's the bravest thing you've ever said? Asked the boy. Help, said the horse. And this simple image of a boy and a horse talking became very popular and began to be used in all sorts of settings, particularly around um, men in um, services who needed to seek help for PTSD but found it very difficult to admit their vulnerability. So th that was one of the first posts that became very popular. And Charlie continued to post images and words and develop conversation around what it means to be strong, what it means to be brave, what it means to be human. And as he continued to post these images, the country fell into COVID. And Charlie's cartoons continued to encourage people to be brave, to keep going, to look to the future, to celebrate and be grateful to the NHS for the work that they were doing. And these images became, um, he, he posted some around uh, in physical spaces and he sent them to nurses and they just became part of the culture in, amongst COVID and they were really encouraging for people. And then um, he started working with a publisher to compile a book, which was then released mid COVID. And that book became a source of encouragement and hope for many, many people. And then as the BBC picked it up, the animated film had a bit more of a storyline. The book itself is just a series of images, but the, story, the film has a storyline, a very simple story of a lost boy looking for a home and finding it in the love and support of his friends as they navigate the storms of life together. So I've been intrigued by this book and as well as buying it for my daughter and various friends, I started to wonder, who is this Charlie McKaysey? Who is this artist? Where did he come from? What is he inspired by? And um, through the wonders of Google and YouTube, we can find out that actually Charlie McKaysey is a well-established artist before any of this took off. He was a cartoonist for The Spectator. He's a well-regarded sculptor and illustrator. And what's interesting to me is that he's also a Christian. 
And a lot of his work comes from his Christian roots and his Christian thoughts. As a sculptor, he has made several beautiful pieces which um, have the image of a person with an angel coming down on them and just kissing the back of their head. And just this idea of the, the divine touch on ordinary people's day-to-day -day lives. So he's explored the connection between the divine and the human. Another one of his pieces, he's a painter and a lithographer, so another one of his pieces was actually very popular in Christian circles a few years ago, but it's an image called the prodigal daughter. And it's an image of a man, presumably the father, hugging a young woman. And this image is foregrounded over text, and the text reads, this story should be called the running father who waited every day for his child to return, his child who had so badly rejected him. And finally, when he saw him a long way off, his father ran to him, or her father ran to him, hugged her and kissed her. And in this way, Charlie has a most wonderful way of illustrating some of the profound Christian truths about the welcome of God. And Charlie talks on his, some of his YouTube videos about the way the church obscures the heart of Christianity, which is that God loves us and is with us. And he talks about how people need something in human nature requires more than just living a moral life, but that we are created, that we, are, we need to have a relationship with God and with each other. Just living a kind moral life doesn't satisfy our deepest needs. And I think this is Part of this understanding of God as a loving presence in all our lives is summed up by another of his images from the boy, the mole, the horse, and the ho for horse and the fox. Where the horse says to the boy, always remember, you matter, you are loved, and you bring to this world things no one else can. And that's difficult to hear because some people don't feel loved and they don't feel like they matter. And actually, some people aren't loved by other people. But every single person is loved by God and these truths are true only in the context of God's love. It is God who always loves us, who always regards us as important and who created us as unique individuals, bringing something to this world that no one else can. What I find interesting is when you see Charlie speaking on YouTube or on the BBC's programme about the making of the animated film, what comes across is how incredibly vulnerable and shy he is. How he seems to have to feel emotions deeply, to have very little filter between the pain and the difficulty of life and his own self. He talks openly about having periods of depression and anxiety. And yet, in recognizing that he is loved by God, he has been able to express his unique voice, that unique gift that he brings to the world. And so many, many people have been encouraged and helped by his art. And so I would encourage you to do a bit of Googling and to find out a bit more about Charlie McKenzie and to follow his example of expressing and valuing the uniqueness that you bring to the world, knowing that you are loved by God and that you matter to him. Amen.